E eu sei falar em português e estou disponível para falar português no almoço e brincar e conversar, o que brasileiros somos muito bons nisso. Mas, but today I'm going to speak in English a little bit. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to see how e-commerce has evolved through these many years, and I come here every year and I see the evolution and the excitement. A little bit about me, I, um, I'm from Recife and went to uh, grad, school undergrad there for architecture and design. Then I went to the US to my master's. And after I finished, I started working in several agencies from Sapien to IXL, which is now Razorfish, and started the evolution. I started with the e-commerce from its beginning, from its concession until now. 12 years ago, I joined Marriott. Um, it was a team of two people with user experience. We generated $500 million a year, and it was great. We were doing an excellent job. Uh, 12 years later, around 67 people, and moving from e-commerce to digital. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. What is this evolution? What is this road? Which is amazingly exciting. I, excited. I, I wake up every day and I think, what a great job I have. So, let me just introduce you to Merit for those that don't know very much. Um, the company has been founded 85 years ago by the Merit family. Uh, we are in the hotel industry in 85 countries and also have 19 brands all over the world. We're adding around two brands every year. And we also have around 3,900 hotels. It's a company grounded in service, in human service. The mantra is, uh, take care of your associates and they will take care of the guests. So you see how service is actually a big part of the company. So then how do you translate and how do you evolve this human touch into what is now a digital touch? How do you evolve this without losing the human element that Viviani was just talking about now, which is very important to the sales? So that's what we'll talk about now. 85 years old in the industry, 150,000 associates all over the world to train and to make sure that they know what they should be doing to help all of us when traveling very different and new places. 85 years, probably Mr. Marriott started, there was not even a PC around him, and he went on to understand what is the web. Mr. Marriott just recently retired, and he's probably around 90 years old, but he still works, and he's there every week. From web, we went on to say, how do we make money out of it? And we went on e-commerce. It, it's been an amazing trajectory for all of us, but it's not the end of it. Actually, it's the beginning of it. So now, we have a new challenge. What is that we do to now create e-commerce services that are omnichannel, that really define an experience that now can encompass the online and offline? Companies like Marriott or companies that have a brick and mortar presence are amazingly well positioned to grow in this and take advantage of this space. How do I take care of the guests from the moment you book to the moment that you stay in the hotel? But why should we get into that? We just made last year $10.4 billion, right? It, it's not little change. We are doing very well. We are growing well every year. But I'm going to tell what is the problem that we have. And it's not a problem. It's a challenge. It's an opportunity. That is it that way. You probably have heard of Generation Y. Generation Y right now is around 25 to 35 years old. They are the new group that in around nine, uh, nine, 2018 will be half of the workforce in the United States. Those are digital natives. They are three times more likely than any other generation to use mobile, to use any type of technology. They don't know life without cell phones. They don't know life without wireless. And recently I heard something that is interesting. They are not digital savvy. They are digitally dependent. They just don't know what to do without it. Um, they are really connected and addicted to their friends and to their connections, and they need to be on all the time. We probably know who I'm talking about and who we are because we are part of that. So, what do you do with this new space, right? How do you start to develop an experience that can fulfill this need of this 
very digitally connected group of people and create a loyalty in this group that, that I have from other generations, such as baby boomers and Gen, as Gen Xers. The exercise that we did is started by mapping what is the user experience, what is right now that a person does through their travel journey. So we started working on what we call a service blueprint, which has now been uh, revamped into what is the, in the digital space. We know that there are three major moments of opportunity, three major stages in someone's travel um, experience. Pre-arrival, right? That's the moment that I think about travel, booking, and then the moment that I leave my house. The second one is on property. What I do during my stay, what are the supports from the hotel, what the hotel means to me when I am in New York for the first time, what support do I need, what, what, what uh, can I get from you, and how can we connect? And then when I come back from this amazing trip, all the memories and all the great things and how I share, and how I turn these memories into an opportunity to my next trip will be maybe in Shanghai next year. How then we close the loop? Before mobile, before um, all these digital um, experiences were into play, our opportunity from e-commerce was really at the pre-arrival. I just sold you a hotel room and hope that you had a good time and that you came back in a few months when you're planning your next trip. That was the best I could do, is to hope that things went well for you. So now my job is much bigger. I will take care of everything throughout. But the first thing we thought is, how do I do this, right? It's a, it's a huge, huge task. So that's how we approached the, the job. We, um, created a project in which people would go, would use some digital diaries. Throughout their trip, they would log in every moment that they use a digital device or every moment that they wish they had the opportunity to use a digital device and the service was just not available for them. So we uh, collected around 256 moments of opportunity in which digital could have been of service for that experience. We then went on to prioritize these opportunities and say, well, we can't do 256, right? But what are the top three or four that will have the most impact? Um, and we concentrated on those. One thing that is interesting, and I think I should mention here is, um, it's okay to have a, a hotel chain of maybe five, 10 hotels and create these amazing digital experiences. The challenge is to do that for 3,800 hotels in 85 countries. This is when things become really complicated and no one has really mastered this true digital experience yet. Everybody's working on it, but there is a lot of work to do. So through this work and prioritization, we define what will be the main opportunities. And we started by concentrating on the check-in and the check-out. Right? And with maybe a few elements that you see throughout the state. But that was our first area of exploration. The first area that was a pain point, like a need for the guest. You then create a second layer that says, well, this is what happens during that moment in the hotel. These are the different services that happen in the human, right? We, let's call the, here the, the touch. So we have the touch and we have the tech. So this is the layer of touch that happens to support this experience on the tech level. And then you have to go through another layer, which is what are the infrastructure, what is the, what is the technology that is available through this entire process? What are the databases? And you have to remember, many of these hotels were uh, acquired, they, were, they came to us with different systems. How do you align all these diverse systems all over the world? That is when things start to truly become a lot more complicated, but then also fascinating. So let's talk a little bit about mobile check-in and check-out for now. First thing, define from the user point of view what you want. To really understand, as Viviane said, we're really talking about people. We can't forget that. E-commerce is a way to a means, and if uh, she did not have that uh, final touch from Amazon, they would have lost her sale and her loyalty. So 
we, we had an ambition, and then it was about balancing this high touch and this high tech. The high tech doesn't replace the high touch. It just takes the place of things that maybe are just, um, just common, that you don't really need the time and you want to wait for. But high touch has a very, very important role. And it, it's really uh, at that moment that you see the value of that relationship. So how do you balance the high touch with the high, high, high tech? So the, this is a map that talks about what will be this entire experience, right? It's a map that says, from the moment that I book my, my room, I get the room number, and then I select it, and I check in on my mobile, and I get there, whoops, swap my little phone on the door, and I enter my hotel room. This is the final stage. This is not really what we can do yet, because there is some technology involved, especially on the door opening that is, is still not uh, completely ready for us. So we created a phase one, which is common, and it's fine, right? A phase one that says, at least I can check in online, and I can check in through my mobile, I can select my room, and then I can just uh, get to the hotel, get a room key, and enter. So the, this is actually our first launch, and I'm going to talk a little bit how we went on in stages to do that. Remote check-in, remote check-out, and also some elements of service requests, which is a big thing. Like, you know, if I'm in my room and something is not working, or maybe as Edward, if I want an extra pillow, I just request that through my mobile phone, and then off we go. So launching this took stages, but I want to first see, share with you how we have been communicating this product. Uh, Marriott actually has been revamping its image, its products, and its service to really support Gen, Gen Ys. And there is a very beautiful and new advertising campaign in place in the US. So I just want to share that with you. Oops, it did not play. All right, let's move on. Imagine a beautiful video here, a campaign for Marriott, hotels, mobile check-in, all the best, a guy traveling for sure. So just think about it, and I trust your imagination will take even to better places. So how we went and we launched this, right? So first we went on with only 10 hotels, just to experiment. What, is the, what the guests think about it before we invest amazing amounts of money in it? And how do you understand the impact that it would be in the hotel? After 10 hotels, we went to 31. Is this the right technology? How do we need to write training materials? How can, can we really deliver on this product when we get to a larger number of hotels? Then, last year, September, and all of this happened last year, and uh, you'll see the progression here. We went on to all hotels in the US, right? There is at least an element of uh, coherence in language that was easier for us to deal with. And two days ago, we launched all over the world for all merit hotels. And it's, it's a, it, it has been a fascinating route. The plans now in a few months are to move into all the remaining brands in the US and then all the remaining brands outside the US. Launching this product globally has been an interesting task. So how do you create a truly omnichannel present um, consistently across the world? It's unlikely that any of us will succeed in that task. Every experience will have to be targeted to a location but based on their behavior, but also based on a few other elements. And I'll mention a few of them. Smartphone penetration, right? Our check-in and check-out is actually a, a, an, app, an app, applicativo. And, but in some countries, the penetration for smartphones is still very low. Middle East, some areas in Asia, Africa. They still use really feature phones, and I need the ability to text somebody a URL in which you can go to a page and check in. It would be okay, but somebody has the patent of URLs in an SMS message, which is a very interesting concept that somebody owns that feature. So uh, New York Times is actually now in court fighting to override this patent. Once that is done, that will open a whole new space for emerging countries that are using uh, is still the feature phones and we can evolve into that. National regulations, 
fascinating, right? Some countries, like in, in, in uh, Chile, you have legally to receive your bill at the way, that moment that you leave. In some countries, in Europe actually, you have to give a credit card and you have to punch a PIN number. Other countries, you have to personally give your passport. In Egypt, if you are a couple, you have to also hand in your marriage certificate to be allowed to stay in the same room. So, you see, culturally, there is a lot for us to think through, and some things will have to be adapted for that specific environment. So, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Every country will deserve and will need their own uh, tailored experience that support their needs. The last next two uh, items are really hand in hand. Market size and number of people that have rewards numbers, right? So first, uh, a market has to be uh, somehow value enough or big enough for us to decide to invest on the app in language. Japan, very high tech, but a small market. We don't have an app in Japanese, right? We do have one in China. Um, and another thing is, those countries have a very low number of rewards members. Right now, check-in and check-out require a credit card and storage, which means that those countries, those people will have to be rewards members. So you see how everything actually in the end is connected and, and is all close together. So th these are some considerations that we will have to slowly work through. Uh, but I want to share some results. Ne there has never been any other hotel product that has uh, just brought to the market with the same positive impact as the mobile check-in. We measure that impact by intent to recommend. So some, a number of selected people after they leave the hotel, they are requested to give us some feedback and the intent to recommend is really high. You see the numbers here, likelihood to recommend, satisfaction, plan to use app again, plan to come again, really high numbers. And the learnings that we also get from this feedback are invaluable. So basically, we know that we can uh, plan better how we utilize our staff. But I, I, now I know how many people will be checking at 10 in the morning or at 2 in the morning, and I know then how many people need to be there and other people may be doing something else. So I can organize my staff in a very different way. The, I also can allocate some of these people that don't need to be there to really concentrate on the high touch. So now what is? I'm tr I'm, uh, it doesn't take away the need of these same associates, but they can best utilize from the transaction to really where they can add value. What, what are the great places to have dinner tonight? Where can I take my kids to have fun? This is really value that they can add. And then design. The lob design is interesting, and that's when you will see that this whole concept of omnichannel takes us designers and product owners to a whole different level, right? What is the impact on the design of the hotels? I may consider to design this lob in a very different way. I may not need any more a front desk, or maybe the front desk becomes a conversation. What is it, right? And then, um, but, but there are a few other things that we had to also refine, such as at the first stage, we, one still has to go and get the key, and we had to make it more prominent so that people knew exactly where to go. So all those items have been refinements to our product. So I want to just mention then, in this process, when I started at Merit 12 years ago, e-commerce, that was my job, user experience for e-commerce. And I really worked together with two teams, marketing team, IT, pretty contained, um, we controlled the databases, we knew everything, one experience for all. But now that we changed for digital, look at how much I have to learn. I didn't, I'm a designer, I didn't really grow up in the hotel industry, but now I need to understand hotel operations, franchisee contracts, architecture, I'm in conversations that I was never part of it before. And it, it is, that is when you really evolve a profession and learn and continue to learn. And that's what I think everyone is here excited to do. Thank you very much.